All right, Chem 11, um, back with our next topic, which is standard solutions and dilution. This is a brand new lecture note. It is now on your D2L page, so you can download that, put that into your notes. Um, that's going to be up in the corner on the iPad, as it usually is. And then I'll be, well, you can see I've already started with some diagrams here on our whiteboard, and we'll be working out some calculations. Um, to do today's lecture, we need the calculator Matic 3000. Special Edition Solar Powered Calculator Matic 3000. So when the zombies come and they knock out the power grid, this guy is still doing his chemistry. Anyway, um, so let's move that. We don't need that right away, but we will at some point later on in the lesson as usual. So let's start talking about standard solutions and then get into dilution, all right? So a standard solution, basically all a standard solution is, it's a solution that we know the exact precise, specific concentration of. So we know it's labeled on the outside and that solution, definitely, you could bet your life on it, that has that concentration. If it says three molar, it's a three molar solution. If it's 0 0.25 moles per liter, it's 0 0.25 moles per liter, you can put your house down on the line, right? You're not gonna lose it. It is exact. Um, they're absolutely essential to proper lab work. And anyone that works in the lab um, knows how to make them. We're gonna learn how to make them today, right? Uh, if we had regular session right now, you guys would be doing this in the lab as kind of a practice thing for future lab work. Um, but we're doing what we're doing, so pay attention. Hopefully we're back in grade 12 and you'll get to actually do this. Anyway, um, also when we buy solutions, right? When we buy stock solution, a stock solution means one that you've bought or purchased from a company and that's your, you know, it's, it's your stock. Like grocery stores have stock on the shelves. We have stock solutions that we purchase of various strengths and various materials that we keep in the prep room, the science prep room. And what happens is before lab, uh, myself or one of the other chemistry teachers goes and, you know, grabs that stock solution and usually, you know, does something with it. We dilute it more often than not and prep it for lab work, all right? So those stock solutions are also standard solutions. When we buy them, we buy a certain material, say like nitric acid, but we can buy three molar nitric acid or five molar nitric acid or 12 molar nitric acid. So whatever they label it as, that's what you can trust is in that container when they ship it to us. Now, to prepare standard solutions, right or even to do the dilution the second part of the lecture today we need a volumetric flask now volumetric flasks they come in a variety of sizes 10 mils to 2 liters and what they are they're the long necked round bottom flask right like this they look like that here's a better picture right so um they're just made of glass but they're actually a lot more expensive than like a beaker or a test tube or anything like that because they are very highly calibrated, which means they, they measure volume very, very precisely. And you can see in the picture, if you have it at home, there's a blue mark on the neck of these things that tells us when the water or your solution level reaches that blue mark, like I've got indicated here or here, that you've reached whatever that volumetric flask's capacity is. So if it's a one liter volumetric flask and you get up to this blue mark, you have one liter of solution in there. If it's a 500 milliliter flask and you get up to this mark, it's a 500 mils of solution, right? And what you're paying for, it's not the materials. Glass is pretty inexpensive, right? It's the calibration. It's the exactness of the measurement that you're paying for when you get these things. So another thing we're gonna be using is a volumetric pipette. It's made of glass too, so you're thinking it shouldn't be too expensive, but they actually are considerably more expensive than test tubes or beakers because again, you're paying for that precision, that calibration, that exactness of measurement. And basically, uh, we can see a few of them here. Basically, it's just a turkey baster. If you've ever seen a turkey baster uh, in your house, it kind of a turkey baster has the plastic thing like this that comes down to a nozzle like that. And then there's a the rubber end on the end of it there like that. Then you squeeze this and it draws fluid up and then you you know, squirt it on the turkey so it stays moist, so, right? It doesn't dry out. Um, that's what a pipette is, a volumetric pipette. Here's one here. Now, instead of having the plastic part here, 
it's got a glass tube and the glass tube is highly calibrated there are markings on it and again we have that marking near the top that tells us hey when we get up to here we've reached 50 mils 10 mils 5 mils they, they too come in a variety of sizes right we can see them here all right here's a little black and white drawing of one here so you can see that turkey based analogy rather than my very poor drawing here you can see one here kind of looks like an ice cream cone so i'll get rid of that hideous monstrosity right now anyway those are two tools volumetric pipette volumetric flask both of these things volumetric means they measure volume exact so to prepare a standard solution so there's two types let's say the solution the solute the stuff we have to dissolve in the solvent the solute is solid right so here is what we would do if, if our solute was these little orange crystals here i made them orange so they'd stand out a little bit what you do is you go to a scale here's my scale and you'd measure off an exact mass of the solid crystals or, or powder whatever it happened to be right you'd weigh that out you'd have it in your little weigh boat here this thing right here and then you take your volumetric uh, flask and you fill it to about halfway i don't fill it up to this mark i fill it up about halfway with my solvent if it's water then i use distilled water in there then what i do is i add the solid to that solvent and if we're saying it's water then we add it to the water and then what we do is we swirl it around right and we let it dissolve now some of these solids don't dissolve so well so what we would do is we'd get some solvent in a beaker and and then put the solids into the beaker um, because the beaker is made of pyrex it can handle heat these are not made of pyrex if you heat these up they will crack and then you've got this stuff all over the place the counter you and it's just a mess so you would never put a volumetric flask on a heater it's not made of the proper materials that can withstand the heat so what we do is we put the crystals in here we dissolve them shake it around a little bit there's a stopper that fits on the top of this thing and so we go and we add the crystals swirl it around dissolve them and then we add more of the solvent and if it's water we add more water up to that mark right and that will give us the proper volume or desired volume of solution now what if my solute is a liquid so here we've got some pink liquid we want to make a solution how do we do that so what we're going to do is we're going to use a volumetric pipette right the turkey baser thing and we'll put it into our stock solution and we'll draw it up so what we do is we squeeze the top of this thing it pushes air out then you put the tip into this pink fluid here and then you let the pressure off of the top end of this and then it will draw up the pink fluid into it and then what you do is you maintain that pressure you get it up to this blue line it is a bit of an art form you'll get you know we would practice this in this class but it is a bit of an art form once it's up to the blue line you quickly transfer it over to a volumetric flask that already has some of your solvent in it so you would drop the pink liquid into the water here if that's what we're using and then again swirl it about a bit and then fill it up to that blue mark on the neck of the volumetric flask and then you could mix it up a little bit more you usually you know take it and you start twisting it upside down like that a few times with the stopper on of course or it's all over the place and that mixes it up for you gets it distributed evenly through with it uh, throughout the solvent now <clears throat> the next thing we have to do um, is a dilution all right so I'm gonna erase these too bad these are actually really nice drawings I feel bad erasing them it's kind of some of my best artwork yet all right so quite often we have to run a dilution in our lab before we even do the lab work miss Giulio or myself or miss McAdam runs one of these dilutions so what we have to do is we have to take a solution that is really highly concentrated super strong stuff and dilute it down into a weaker lower concentrated solution why would we do this why would the school 
buy a big container of very, very strong stuff rather than a big container of really weak stuff, right? Well, think about it this way. There's a couple of reasons for it, right? Now, let's say I bought a jug of HCl, right? Hydrochloric acid, we use that quite often in our labs. We might buy stuff that is 12 molar, so 12 moles per liter. Now, most of our labs, the HCl that is put out into the lab space for you and, you know, the little bottles, all right? That HCl is one molar. So why do we buy this when we so frequently use this, right? Well, we run a lot of labs, right? There's a lab for your class, and we might use this in several labs for your class, but then the grade 10s are running labs, the grade 12s are running labs, the other sections of grade 11 are running labs. So we need a lot of this one molar stuff, right? And we only have so much space in the prep room. So space is a thing that we have to consider. We also have to consider cost. See what I did there? The S and cost, I made it a dollar sign. See that? Pretty good. Anyway, cost, the cost of shipping. So from this one very large container, we would get tons and, you know, we'd get hundreds of these, right? But if we bought hundreds of these, it would cost a lot more because shipping is based on volume and mass. And it's also based on how much space it takes up. And in our own lab, our own prep room, we've got to consider space. I can store one big jug rather than a hundred medium size or smaller jugs, right? So, and it's very simple. All we do is we run a dilution to get us from the strong stuff to the weaker stuff, all right? So space and cost of shipping and, and, and getting this stuff into the school is why we often order really strong stuff and dilute it down. Um, in order to dilute a strong solution, all we have to do is take a little bit of this and add some solvent to it. And the solvent for acid is water. So that's actually, you know, pretty accessible. We've got tons of water at the school. So here's how we do our dilution. There's a diagram right here, and I will kind of go through it with you here. So what we have is we're going to have our stock solution. I'll just draw like this. They have it in a volumetric flask here. I don't have the time for that because we want to get this done in a decent time, you know, in a decent time. So we've got our stock uh, solution here. And this is the strong stuff, right? This is like our 12 molar HCO we were just talking about. And what we do is we pipette a little bit of that. So we take, you know, a little bit out with that pipette, that turkey baster, and it's graduated. And what we do is we transfer it into an empty volumetric flask. So there's a little mark there. So we take this stock stuff and we put it into a volumetric flask. And then what we do is we add the solvent afterwards. So we take the stock, a small amount of it, it goes in here, and then we simply add solvent. And for a lot of the stuff at the school, the solvent tends to be H2O. So once that little bit of the stock solution is in there, we simply add water and we build it up to that line on the neck of the volumetric flask. That's it. It's really, really simple. Take a little bit of the strong stuff that's really potent, put it in here, add some solvent. Now there's a lot more solvent to that little bit of solute, and it will weaken it. It'll dilute it, lower that concentration. Now, how much of this do we take? Right? That's the thing. Do I, do I take 10 mils, 5 mils, 200 mils? How much of this do I need? Well, that depends on what you want to make right? Do I want a solution that's diluted at one mole per liter, 0 0.5 moles per liter, two moles per liter? What is it going to be? So there's some variables here. So of course there's some math. You didn't think you were getting away without doing any math today, did you? This is grade 11 chemistry. It's like science math. Anyway, the good thing is just like molarity, our formula is super simple and super easy to use. All right. So the formula for a dilution is C1, V1 is equal to C2, V2. 
all right and all it is you can see it here this is my strong stuff this is the highly concentrated stuff all right so this is my initial this is the stock solution that I you know I bought from the scientific supply company this is the diluted or weak stuff right so this is what we want to make this is what we want to make so we have our initial conditions just like in physics we have you know one means initial two means final right and so there's a change that takes place so here's what happens this is our initial concentration of our stock strong stuff the highly concentrated stuff this is my initial volume, the volume of the strong stuff that I removed from the stock container. C2 is the concentration of the diluted solution that we make. And V2 is the volume of that diluted stuff that we made, okay? And that's all here on our note. So let's do a sample problem here. Keeping this in mind, I'll erase this because I think we can remember that when we dilute, we go from strong to weak. And we'll do these problems. The first one we'll do, and we'll do it in pink here. So, a hospital needs a saline drip with a concentration of zero point or zero point one five zero moles per liter to be made. A lab tech has fifty mils of form molar. I know molar moles per liter. Stock solution available. What volume of saline can they make? So, what I always do is I. Right at the top of my problem, I write these things. This is my formula. I'm just keeping track of all my information and figuring out what I got to make. So, a hospital needs a saline drip with a concentration of 0 0.15. So that's what they want to make, that 0 0.150 moles per liter. A lab tech has 50 mils of 4 molar stuff. So this is four, and I'll change that big M to moles per liter so that these are the same. I don't leave the big M in there, but we know what this means. It means moles per liter and 50 mils of it. Now, I know 50 mils is, because I have to change this to liters, it's 0 0.05 liters. So what we are looking for is V2. Now we can do the work. So I'm looking for V2. I want to isolate V2 all on one side. Right now, it is being multiplied by C2. So if I divide both sides by C2, that'll work. I'm just going to take this and pop it under there. Right? So I want this. Take the other thing. Put it underneath the other side. So V2 will be equal to C1V1 over C2. All right, so it looks like that when we rearrange it. You've, you've probably done this before in physics and, and math and stuff. So I fill in my values. Now, this is why this is useful here, because now I've got my two ones over here and my two twos over here. So C1 is four moles per liter. V1, common mistake, people leave it as 50 mils. Let's make sure it's in liters. And we divide that by C2, which is the diluted concentration. And what will happen is the moles per liter divided by moles per liter will cancel. I'll be left with my only unit is liters, which is great. And then when I multiply this out, it ends up being 1.33 liters. And that is my $1 million proper answer. All right. Pause the video if you want to take a look at that. I'm going to move on to sample problem number two. Let's do sample problem number two in green. Hey, look, I'm the star of this one. Mr. McDonald has a stock solution. If it's a stock solution, that's C1, and it's 12 molar, which means 12 moles per liter. Of hydrochloric acid in the prep room, he wants to make... I'll put these other things in here so I can fill them in as it says. He wants to make 1,500 milliliters, so 1,500 mils of one molar, so one mole per liter, 
hydrochloric acid. What volume of the stock, and we know the stock is the strong stuff, right? So what volume of that stock stuff do I have to pipette out of there and, and, and make you know my weak stuff with? So I'm looking for V1 here. So again, if I start with this, right, this is the original formula. If I'm looking for V1, I take C1, I put it under there, right? It's multiply here, it's divide over here. So V1 is equal to C2V2 over C1. So V1 is going to be equal to, again, writing this out ahead of time makes it easier. I've got one mole per liter multiplied by V2. Now it was 1500 mils, but I know that is 1.5 liters. So I got to make sure, I almost forgot that, right? Common mistake. And then C1 is 12 moles per liter. And we got moles per liter here, divided by moles per liter there. That's going to cancel out. It will leave me with liters. And V1 is going to be equal to 0.125 liters. Or if we had milliliters, to give you another idea, 125 milliliters. But this is my one million dollar final answer and it's correct so again pause the video if you want to take a look at this and if you're thinking wow that that's not really all that hard that's the beauty of this right same with the molarity that we did yesterday or the day before really not all that hard but it's so useful in the chem lab you'll be using this over and over again it's nice when something really important is actually simple for once in chemistry isn't it Anyway, our last problem. Sample problem number three. Let's do sample problem number three in red. All right. So it says a chemist uses 20 mils of a stock solution. So this is 20 mils. C2V2. I'm going to put these all here because i got to find three of the four of those usually of a stock nitric acid solution in order to prepare, so I'm making, this is what I'm making, 3.25 liters of this, and it's 0 0.65 moles per liter. What is the concentration of the original stuff? So a chemist took 20 mils of the really strong stuff, and he made 3.25 liters of this weaker concentration. Well, what was the concentration of the original solution? So we're looking for C1. That means we take V1 and divide it out over here. It's multiply here, it'll be divide over there. So our formula is C1 is equal to C2V2 over V1. And C1 is equal to, again, I've got it all written out here. Times 3.25 liters divided by ah, 20 mils again sir slipping but I caught myself 20 mils has to be changed into liters so zero point or sorry I have I believe this is 200 in your PowerPoint it'll be 200 in the updated PowerPoint let's use that so it matches up with what you got I just realized I edited that so it's 0.2 trust me I know the presentation says 20 mils. Yours will say 200 because I did update it. So this is our new liters here. And when we divide that out, C1 is equal to, it's going to be 10.56 moles per liter. So the original stronger stuff was 10.56 moles per liter. And this is my $1 million proper answer. All right. So what had happened here, just to clarify, I had it at 20 mils, and then I thought I started working out the numbers in my head, and I wanted to, you know, I wanted it to be a little bit lower concentration. It was a very high concentration originally with just the, the 20 mils. So I made it 200 mils. I just forgot to change it on here. But on your class website, sample problem number three will have 200 mils, not 20. So the answer will be this. This answer goes along with your note on your class website. All right. Anyway, that's it. Hope it's nice and simple for you, except for my screw-up at the end there. 
Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, fire them off in the comments section below this YouTube video or reach out to me through Edsby if you're one of my students. All right? Anyway, I hope everything was clear. I'll talk to you soon. Go out and dilute stuff now. All right? I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.